With expected storms this weekend, it's the beginning of monsoon moisture hitting Colorado, and that does much more than just cool us off and water our lawns. Following a year of massive wildfires, it opens up the potential for even more issues on burn scars across our state. So let's go in depth, talking about what the season is, what it means weather-wise, how rain impacts burn scars, the issues it's caused already, and what's being done to prevent future problems. According to the Colorado Climate Center, monsoon season is a shift in the wind pattern that allows for continuous moisture to flow from the Gulf of California into the normally arid southwest region of the country. It usually starts up in July and runs through August. While it's usually more prevalent and impactful in the southwest, it does bring moisture to a good portion of the state. So let's get more from meteorologist Stacy Donaldson. While we expect very warm weather here across the Front Range with poor air quality, things are going to start to change first for southwestern Colorado, where we expect a lot of monsoon moisture pushing up into southwestern Colorado, and it stretches from Telluride to Montrose to Durango and Pagosa Springs. This is where we have the flash flood watch in effect through Thursday night and Friday night. So very heavy rainfall expected in this area, and then we're going to see more rainfall stretching across Colorado as we go into the weekend. But for now, we're expecting this very strong flow here from the southwest, bringing in that monsoon moisture that we talk about a lot a lot this time of year, because this is where we get those isolated th thunderstorms that are very heavy moving through the area. So scattered strong thunderstorms will be affecting us along with a cold front pushing across the state. So especially in the burn scar areas through our northern, central and southern mountains, we could be seeing some mudslides and some flash flooding here going into the next couple of days and especially in to the weekend where this rain really kicks in. Now into Sunday, we'll have a repeat of the rain off to our west. We will also have showers here for the front range, but that's what we'll be looking for in the next couple of days is flash flooding and mudslide potential here throughout western Colorado. And when that moisture, that heavy rainfall hits burn scar areas, it can cause flooding, debris flows, mudslides and more. Why? Well, we spoke with the National Weather Service about how wildfires actually change the composition of the soil after it's been burnt and what happens when storms roll through. Think of that as like rain on asphalt. You know, it, when you're in a parking lot and it starts to rain, it doesn't take a whole lot of rain for water to start running off that asphalt or the grassy areas that absorbs it really nicely. So that's the difference we have between an ordinary healthy forest and one that's been burned over. It's a lot more susceptible to that to that rain and runoff. We've already seen examples of that in Glenwood Canyon. Rain on the Grizzly Creek burn scar has led to mudslides and debris flows, with I-70 being shut down multiple times this month alone. We recently got a tour of that burn scar to see the challenges crews are facing and why CDOT says people should plan for this stretch of road to be closed at times into the future when it rains, similar to when major snowstorms hit. When there's a blizzard, you know, you know that Vail Pass is going to close, right? You know that Glenwood Canyon will sometimes close. This is something that happens on roads that go through, you know, these, these uh, technically challenging places and you know, I think the, the more the more we can have a, you know, drumbeat for how it works when it happens, the better it is for people to prepare to deal with it. Also during that tour, we learned that five separate areas are actually draining onto or over the highway, making it a complicated fix. Also, rainfall has carved a new channel in one area, pushing water and debris onto the highway. Here's how CDOT explained what they plan to do to address that. What they're going to do is try to cut a pilot channel. Um, they will remove some of the material in the middle to try to move the river back into its normal channel. Once they do that, um, we will pull our folks out and we will leave it and we will let it basically naturally erode. Over at the Cameron Peak burn scar in Larimer County, they're facing similar challenges and trying to prevent similar issues. The Coalition for the Poudre River Watershed has fundraised to do aerial mulching of parts of the burn scar that run into the Poudre River. Helicopters have been picking up and dropping hundreds of pounds of mulch from the sky onto burned areas. This basically helps stabilize the soil. Um, so when rain comes through and hits the soil, um, it prevents um, debris flows and sedimentation to the river, like what we've seen over the past few weeks in the Poudre. If the water is too full of ash and sediment from runoff, the drinking water from the river becomes unsafe to drink. So far, the Watershed Coalition has dropped mulch on nearly a thousand acres over two and a half weeks. The problem? 
They estimate they need to mulch 10,000 acres total. Their fundraising efforts to do that are still ongoing. So what should you know as we move into monsoon season? If you're traveling through an area where wildfire burn scars are, watch the weather, know how quickly flooding can happen, and prepare for, pro for possible closures. Crews say the process of dealing with these burn scars and the issues that come with them will be a multi-year process.